So, Rob, I want you to watch this guy. Just give me your honest take on, on this. <laughs> okay. Who has always been accused of assassinating JFK. You are not alone. And I have created a fashion design for innocent warriors like us. My love language is you believing that I have nothing to do with the JFK assassination. How do we get one of those? <laughs> so, I mean, I love that shirt like what? play it one more time Molly, because it, it is pretty good i was like so this is this is one more time we'll just watch it one more time here because they're so short someone who has always been accused of assassinating jfk you are not alone and i have created a fashion design for innocent warriors like us my love language is you believing that i have nothing to do with the jfk assassination so this guy, I've become obsessed with this guy, and Molly knew it more than I did. And Molly, like, what? Can you help me? Because you explained it to me, but I didn't even get it when you explained it to me. And I figured I would save it for here to understand what's yeah. going on. Okay, let me school you boys. This is okay. uh, that person's name on Instagram is Marcus Pork Jr. He's okay. the twenty-year-old son of Marcus <laughs> Pork Sr. Wait who, a second. Let's, okay. Let's see if we can find him here. I'm off. So he's twenty years old. Let's see if we can find. Play him another one of him. Like play another here. good one. Yeah, yeah. Go. This person is not twenty. My son is very well behaved today, so I rewarded him with his yogurt. His yogurt are warm because I'm behaved. If I make a tantrum. The yogurt will go up to the fridge. The cold yogurt shiver his throat and freeze his voice so he cannot speak. I'm thankful for my speech and for my words today. I want to talk forever, and one day I will. <laughs> what? Okay, so this is a Tim Heidecker sketch. This is like... No, this is real. This is the dad, Marcus Port. I, I haven't watched this one, so let's, let's, okay, let's see, see what happens. Hoo, hoo, hoo. This is my impression of you in the winter. Thankfully, I made a design about you. It's seasonal depression time. That's the sadness in the couch and forget to leave the house. Wear this now. Hoo, hoo. <laughs> so I think these guys might have bought like a screen printing company and they're like trying to print the most obscure shit on on t-shirts i mean i i'm so obsessed with this guy i'm like i can't even get uh in front of it like i they're so funny like so yeah i guess he knows that they're funny right i mean they do we know yeah. they must they must know they're funny by the way speaking of stuff that is funny i don't want to plug these guys but the law hawk video that we showed oh. a couple weeks ago <clears throat> was by far the biggest thing we've ever shown. Like, I mean, so that was a real, people. yeah, a real crazy moment there. We found, we got in the zeitgeist. I think they, they, um, they know that that's funny. I mean, I, clearly they know that that's funny. But, I ever um, from, I, I've heard so many reports. I've talked to so many different people who know the law Hawk. So the law Hawk was one of the mm. funniest people they went to college with. He's a real deal yeah. person. He's a real lawyer, yeah. and I think he basically cornered the market on doing exactly what we responded to. Like, hey, look, that will stick in your craw, and I, at one point you might be arrested, and you might be like, I got to call the law hawk. Like, if I don't have one, I'm going to call the law hawk. Someone in and the comments – good. On, on Instagram, someone in the comments was like, hey, guys, I went to law school with the law hawk, and he's great. He's, like, so smart. I would trust him for all my DUI needs. This is another lawyer. And he's like, I would trust him for all my DUI needs. And I was like, what the fuck is going on with all of the lawyers in Texas that they all have like other DUI lawyers to get them out of trouble? I have, I, I mean, know. like it, it's an interesting, it, like uh, it's an interesting like thing because I think that like, it's like travel agencies, right? Like, how do you get a lawyer? You make these kind of crazy commercials. You hold a hammer. You you do something insane, and it like you burrow into people's brains. It's like you're trying to become a me. Wait, how is that like, like a you travel know, agency? Travel agency. It's like maybe it's a, maybe a little bit outdated. They, I don't know. Maybe you don't know where to go. Like you know, oh, like a travel oh, agency. Like, like, yeah, I see. I see. Yeah, you, yeah, you know, it's yeah. like it's like back in the day, you might be oh, well, I know how to get a lawyer. Or I have a lawyer. Like you know. Now, by the way, I gotta tell you, we're going to Europe um, with how did this get made. And uh, use a travel agent. 
uh, yeah. our friend Aziz Ansari gave me a travel agent that I've been using for years now. And it's like, oh, the la- the, it's totally the worth it. Thing. I feel like if you go on a big trip, like if you go to Europe, like I went over to Amsterdam to see my brother uh, a long, like 10 years ago. Yeah. And um, our friend Peter Brunzapato was like, oh, use my travel agent. And I got to say, I had the fucking best flight on air New Zealand, which was not on my radar, like Air right. New Zealand. I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to pay the money to go first class. Like I, it was the best travel experience I've ever had. So I feel like if you're gonna, you know, if you want to spend a little bit of money, it totally is worth it. Yeah. I but, mean, by um, the way, it's free. I don't get yeah. I don't get it. I don't know how they make it. It's not even worth they, it. Free. Just free. Yeah. Well, they I mean that's the thing. Got to jack up. They're jacking well, they get up they get money. They get I think they're getting money out from somebody from the back end. <laughs> well, they definitely are. It's a business. Yeah. That's Maybe. what I'm saying. So they're not jacking, they're not jacking not, up your prices. I think they are. They've got Well, Rob, you know, I know that you're a good Christian boy and I am a good Catholic boy Thank and you. um Thank you. And uh I figured, you know, maybe right now uh, oh, or maybe you know what? Let's keep it. Let's keep it in the. You know, we're talking about travel. I don't know what this is, but this is a travel hack. Molly, did you okay. see that in the, the notes? I don't remember what this is. I I I just dump clips into <laughs> this document oh, that I, I share with send, Molly. Well, I don't even do that. I send. Oh, okay, my, we should. I, I DM Molly stuff on Instagram and hope that she can find. I'm going to put you on this chain of uh, notes. So you can just put it in there. Um, oh, by the way, is anyone going to the Dinosaur Show in Chicago? But Rob and I were going to announce it. We teased it in the last episode. Hey, we got some exciting news. Dinosaur, our improv group, is going to go to Chicago. We announced it, and within eight hours, we sold out three shows. They added a fourth show without even telling us, and we sold that out immediately. So we are doing four sold-out shows in Chicago. I can't even tell you to come because it's sold out. Um, well, now I just got to figure I, out where we're going to I think I told you that the reason we sold out uh, so quickly is because a dear, dear friend of mine is a ticket scalper and yeah. uh, he bought all of the tickets and is going to resell them for in scalp them. So that, but that's why this one guy, I, I, and, and, and look any which way we sold it. I, but you know, Rob, someone brings this up in the chat, Russ Clark. Um, they said, well, can you bring dinosaur to Europe? I actually do yeah. want to do that because uh, yes. apparently right now, like the UK is kind of starved for improv. I, I think we could get together a good group to go there. Oh, we could go to London and kill it. It would be so fun. We should totally do that. And we should say where um, we stayed for uh, for our the movie that we did. Oh, yeah. That for, was great. For Knuckles. Um, that was a fun hotel. I like that. I mean, maybe that's a super expensive hotel. Who knows? Uh, Molly, play this this clip that for the travel hack. I don't know what this is, uh, but let's see. Okay. So you oh, see a little baby. Seen, yeah. She's oh, such a- you see, this is the way to do it. Yeah. You put the, now the blazer on the kid. Yeah. Now that your kids are full grown, I want to get one of those little scooter suitcases for my daughter. You know, it's like a scooter, but the, yeah. the suitcases. I got those. They're it. never going to work. They're always going to go oh, way yeah. slower than that. You know, and, and I see Ben Schwartz is doing Royal Albert Hall in the UK. Um, oh. And I know he already did some shows in the UK. Here's my opinion on Royal Albert Hall. And honestly, I think it's just a difference of opinion. I haven't talked to Ben Schwartz about this. I'm just saying, but this is why I feel about it. I think that improv is best done in slightly smaller venues. I would yeah, be I uncomfortable doing like a thousand seat theater for improv. I think that that's fine for stand up. I like just the more intimacy of, you know, 500 people, uh, you know, in that grouping or smaller. But do you, if, but do you like money? Do you like money? Well, yes. And that's the other thing. I get like doing one big show that sells a bunch of tickets. Like, how did this get made? We do big venues. I love doing big venues. It's just, to me, I feel like improv is such a personal thing. And when you feel like you're a part of it on some level, I think it's just a more dynamic experience. But by the way, if I had the opportunity to go see improv at Royal Albert Hall, let fucking be there in a heartbeat. It, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, we'll see. I mean, we'll we'll figure it out in Chicago. You know, we'll see how because that place isn't gigantic. I don't think it's. I think it's like a few hundred seats, right? And it's then, like, a, like a like a three hundred plus. Yeah, so we'll do that, and then we'll see. You know, I mean, how big is Largo? Largo is like three hundred, probably. Yeah, Largo is about like two fifty. 
You know, yeah. so it's uh, what's kind of great about it too, and this is what I think Manzukis is saying too. Uh, it's great not to have those fucking mics on your head, like yeah. these, like little, because like, it's like then you can actually communicate too. Um, this is a little anyway. Who knows? It, it, like who knows? 